Krumlov is a magical place. It's a UNESCO heritage site. That part of Central Europe escaped destruction in World War II. And uh, since the fall of communism, uh, most of the uh, monuments and even everyday buildings have been restored to their, to their uh, original splendor. When, when I was first there, I thought it looks like Disney, but it's real. <laughs> it's absolutely immaculate, it's spotless, and so on. It, uh, it feels like you're walking back in time. And then you can walk out the door and you're like seeing everything that you've learned. Like you're seeing frescoes or whatever. You're, you're studying opera and then you get to go see an opera. And you know, this experience, this whole experience has been, if not the best, one of the best experiences of my life overall. Chesky Krumlov has, in addition to the town, uh, a, a massive furnished castle, quite unlike uh, anything anywhere else in Europe. And uh, above all, behind the castle, there is a Baroque theater, uh, one of two in the entire world, um, with the, the original working machinery and the costumes. Now, this is something that cannot be exploited commercially. Therefore, students cannot buy tickets to the performances uh, in this theater. It's, it's Dalhousie's good fortune that uh, Peter Perina was able to set up this course. That makes Dalhousie students VIPs. While the course in Chesky Krumlov is about European court culture uh, of the 17th and 18th century, so that would include um, political events and uh, figures, as well as music, theater, drama, literature, um, and then also some uh, more uh, obscure things like landscape gardens and carp ponds and the whole economics of carp ponds. To see, in a very direct way, the uh, evidence of material culture of the uh, 17th and 18th century, performance, art, um, clothing, architecture, all of these things around them, but then to be able to put those in their context, to their historical context, their social context, their artistic context, and to understand how all of those elements interacted in the lives of people who were living in that period. Baroque night is a recreation of a series of Baroque festivities, and this includes um, the dancing, uh, a kind of a banquet setting with, with a lot of uh, very delicious food, uh, there are also Baroque, um, Baroque fireworks, as well as Baroque opera, or short excerpts of opera, which are performed inside the famous uh, Court Opera House. And this is followed by a fabulous garden party, lit up by you know, hundreds and hundreds of candles, um, with uh, lavish food um, that uh, aristocrats would, would, would feast upon. Um, and there are uh, various attractions, performers uh, during the Baroque night and ends of course with the magnificent Baroque fireworks. The best fireworks experience I've had in my life. We've traveled to a number of countries where there have been fireworks, but the ones in Chesky Krumlov on Baroque night are unique. With Baroque night, they had like, they put, took you into the castle, into the ballroom where you could do the waltz or ha go and bet your stones for casinos or for race mice that, or something like that. It was it was so weird but it was so different and yet it was so interesting. And I think that during Baroque night they did a great job of translating especially the Commedia dell'arte bit by really really getting us all involved in the game and in the fun and the whole evening had this little side plot of activity uh, that you could participate in. Uh, to see an opera in the Baroque theater where I've looked like in textbooks that theater is always in all of our textbooks. It's like look at the whatever the perspective in this theater and to see that and just like see the set changes and like <laughs> watch a woman come down and sing her aria from a cloud was just like this is amazing. Uh, well the Five Pebbled Rose is a medieval renaissance festival uh, that is held in Chesky Krumlov uh, every year. It's essentially a giant party over uh, a three-day period there. Um, the Five Petal Rose Festival <laughs> was probably the most fun two days I've ever had. That was one of the best weekends of my life. <laughs> you know, getting in peasant costumes and dancing in the streets and just, you know, we twirled fire and stood on a bed of nails. Watching the parade of nobles coming through and like, it was just, it was so surreal. Um, to the guys who say you have to have a jacket and 
high, at least, that to the women we say, this is your opportunity to have not quite an evening dress, but a nice dress. Shoes are important, and bringing good <laughs> shoes. <laughs> um, as much, I brought too many pairs of shoes that I didn't end up wearing because I thought, you know, I'm in Europe, I'll wear my nicest shoes, but on the cobblestone streets, it's best to go with your sneakers. I would say pack light and bring a light raincoat. The Ponzion was absolutely amazing. Um, I was not expecting it at all. Um, and it's just, the accommodations are wonderful. This place is incredible. I, I can only say the nicest things about the people who run this place. That if you are a lover of meat, you are going to love Chesky Krumlov. They are incredible specialists of cabbage, uh, potatoes, dumplings. The cabbage is excellent. <laughs> Look at a menu and go, okay, this is meat and fried cheese and a piece of cucumber. And <laughs> that's what they'll mean by salad. <laughs> um, and that their vegetarian will be fried cheese, fried cheese, fried cheese. <laughs> and, but I find that it's actually easier than I thought to find a balance and you kind of adapt to it and it, you find that the food's actually really, really good. There's a really great vegetarian restaurant um, called Live On. Uh, we've made friends and they're so they're so cool and so nice. There's a kind of bonding between students and between students and teachers that I've never experienced in any other teaching I've ever done. Don't be discouraged by the money. Uh, because I, I was always, yeah, it seemed somehow un unattainable to me when I was younger to do an exchange program. And I don't know why. Um, so I would say really make it a priority because the experience is more valuable than, uh, than anything.